I took my kids to see Fulham play the other night, which was really rather wonderful. They beat, beat Swansea 2-1, two, two, and we had ringside seats. So it was fabulous. You could smell the sweat. And on the way back, I had a look at some of these free newspapers that you get on the um, tubes now. This one is called The London Light. And the headline on this newspaper says, Mets vans for white police only. Does that mean that the Metropolitan Police, that's the Mets, have decided that you can only put white police officers in their vans? And the story is saying that there's apartheid still in the police. Uh, the claims contained in a document to be submitted to the tribunal outline one incident when a black woman PCSO, so in actual fact she wasn't a police officer at all, she's a police community support officer, was allegedly ejected from a van by a white colleague and told to get into the black van. One incident that may or may not have happened. And that leads to the headline, Met Vans for White Police Only. Excellent. Can you spot the resemblance between the headline and the truth? Next one, Daily Mail, that bastion of conjecture. Uh, social websites harm a child's brain. And if you actually go onto their website, in fact, it goes further and says, Facebook causes cancer. <laughs> Basically, they're making an enormous story out of one person's conjecture, Baroness Greenfield. Sites such as Facebook, Twitter and Bebo are said, said, to shorten attention spans. Has any scientific study been done? No. My fear is that these technologies are infantilizing the brain. There you go. My brain's been infantilized already because I can't say the word infantilized. Oh, it could leave a generation with poor attention spans. Lady Greenfield told the Lords that a teacher of 30 years' experience had told her she had noticed a sharp decline in the ability of her pupils to understand others. Well, there you go then. Because Baroness Greenfield or Lady Greenfield knows a teacher who's been teaching for 30 years and says, oh, I think my, te my pupils aren't quite as attentive as they were when I started 30 years ago. That becomes transferred into the headline, Social Websites Harm a Children's Brain and Facebook Causes Cancer. I despair of the British press. This is the same newspaper that's published a list of the 50 people who've done the most harm to Great Britain. And one of them was Graham Kendrick because he wrote the song Shine, Jesus, Shine. And that's mushed up Christianity, apparently, and made us all become airheaded woofters or some other such cod. This basically is opinion and conjecture being broadcast as fact. The bottom line is you need to try and seek for yourself. You need to develop critical thinking. You need to not just let stuff keep washed over you. Say, oh, I believe it because it's in the paper. Basically, if it's in the paper, there's a fairly high chance that it could be a load of old cack. It's important that you do the research. Google now, you can just find out about anything. You can find rubbish, of course, but it gives you the opportunity to see both sides of the story. You get people like Christian Voice, who is about 200 people up in Newcastle, led by a guy called Stephen Green, who just complains about everything. So people like that are out there shouting and raving and getting their opinions put in the paper left, right and centre. But he, just, he's, no, he, he, he doesn't have a voice for Christianity in this country. He has a voice for his own opinions and that of a small minority. The upshot of this is that the message of Christianity is not going to get out through the press. The only way really that Christianity is even going to be seen and Jesus is ever going to be seen for what he stands for is if Christian, individual Christian people live the life. If they walk the walk, if they do what Jesus is calling them to do, love their neighbours, be generous with their time and with their money, that is how the messages are going to get across. Not from the big shouting headlines, but from the simple truth of people in streets who know that there are Christians in their street who love them and care for them and have got something special going on in their lives. That is how the message is going to get across.